Hi, it's Rose. Welcome back to the School of Mathematics, Nigeria. It feels good to be back here. All right, so to get into today's video, we're treating the number system. What's the number system and why do we have to know it? We'll answer that question today. So to make it a little bit easier, we have the tree that shows the numbers that we have, right? And to know this, we have to start from here to the top. So you have the negative numbers, zero, and your positive numbers. And this makes up what we call the integers. If it's not an integer, it's therefore a non-integer. And so the integer also makes up, that's the integer and the non-integer, also makes up what we call the rational numbers. And if it's not a rational number, it is an irrational number. And so both the rational and irrational numbers makes up what we call the real numbers i'm sure you're not seeing anything as the natural or whole numbers yeah we'll get to that okay but for now this is a tree that helps you know the kinds of numbers we have what they are about now to make more sense of it let's do something so if you notice i added what we have as the natural numbers and whole numbers right so natural numbers are positive numbers without the digit zero but all numbers are numbers or positive numbers, including zero. And let's do something so it can make more sense. So we have what we call the number line. We have the number line. We have the one going towards the right, which are positive numbers. And then we have the one going towards the left, which are negative numbers. And we have the middle, which is the zero, right? So you have one, two three four continuously and you have minus one minus two minus three minus four continuously now these numbers without zero are called natural numbers and if we include zero to these natural numbers they are called whole numbers and if we include the whole of this number line that's the negative plus Positive including zero, they are called integers. Now take note of what integers are. Integers cannot be decimal or fraction, except this way. So if we say that four is an integer, it can be written like this to give us four. Or it can be written as this to give us a fraction. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But yes, that is this now falls under the category of non-integers. The only case where we have integers as fractions are when they are divided by one. These numbers or all numbers can be divided by one are integers. But if they are divided by numbers that are not one, they are divided by numbers that are not one. I hope that statement makes sense. They are non-integers. Now moving to rational numbers. Rational numbers, we've done this before. There are ratios, meaning it has a numerator and denominator. It's a fraction. That's where it got the name rational numbers from. And then these fractions can be divided to get good numbers that make sense. That is where we now come in with irrational numbers. These are numbers that when you divide them, they're just continuous, right? I hope that definition makes sense. But when you divide an irrational number, where you have things like pi, 3.17 continuously, right? Or rational numbers, rational, when something makes sense. That's how I always think about it, when something makes makes sense. Like, you are being irrational, meaning it's not making sense. That's how I think about it, okay? Now, when you group all of these numbers, and that gives you what you call your real numbers. So to learn more about uh, this arithmetic, um, numbers, laws of arithmetics, there's a link here. You check it, you see what we're trying to talk about. So now I want you to answer this question for me. But before we do that, I should tell you a little bit about it before we do that, right? Now that we have this number line, it tells you that numbers on the right are greater than numbers on the left. That's what we talk about less than and greater than, right? So this is where we come about less than, greater than and equal to. I'm using my back camera, so I'm not sure if I am in the screen. So, pardon any mistake that happens, okay? 
Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I had to have somebody confirm for me. All right. <laughs> okay, so we have less than, greater than, and equal to. So this is what the symbols are. This is the symbol for the less than, greater than. Of course, you see, less than means numbers towards the side. Greater than means numbers towards the side. And equal to means it's equal. Now let's give, give, give an example so we can make sense of it. So minus 4 is what to 4? It's less than. It's less than 4. Right? 2 is what to minus 1? 2 is here. So 2 is greater than minus 1. Does that make any sense? 2 is what to 2? So is equal to 2, right? So I need you to do this for me. Tell me what this is. What is minus 6 to minus 6? Is it less than, is it greater than, or is it equal to? Of course, you know, we never leave the class or we never leave a session without a question for you. So let us know in the comment section what minus 6 is to minus 6. And I hope we've been able to break down number system, what numbers have, the types of numbers, how they came about, and how they are related. And of course, the symbols. I'll see you in the next class. Until then.